Hi students, this is the fifth part. In this part, we are going to deal in detail the nuances of topic continuity and we'll see the various applications of this with re related to function. So stay tuned for this part. So after doing brainstorming over limits, finite limits, infinite limits and how to find out limits, let's come to topic that is of prime importance. Okay, so what was continuity? So a function is said to be continuous if we can draw a graph of function with one continuous line or in other words you can say that you have picked out your pen and now you are drawing a graph and if without pointing out or taking out your pen out of your paper sheet if you can draw the graph in complete go then that function in rough terms is also called as continuous function. Let's understand it more mathematically that was a more intuitive one let's get it more mathematical. In terms of mathematics, the function f is called as continuous at a defined point c if the first and foremost condition is that the function has to be defined at that point, that is fc is defined. The second condition that the limit when x approaches towards c should exist either from the left hand side or from the right hand side. And the third point is that the value of the function at x equal to c must be equal to the value of the function which we have found out by using limits. So if a given function satisfied these three kind of informations we can say that the function is continuous and these three definitions include the mathematical definition of continuity and I think that is clear to define a continuous function. If you have understood the mathematical definition of continuity so let's make it more firmer with an example you have a function that is x minus 1 and you have to check whether this function is continuous at x equal to 2 on the right hand side you can see the graph of f x equal x minus 1 this is y axis this is x axis this point which is shown over here is 2 and this point on the y axis is showing you 1 so first of all out of three points we will see that what is the value of the function at x equal to 2 as this is a linear function we can directly put in the value of x so while applying x equal to 2 the value that function is giving is 2 minus 1 and that is equal to 1. Now we are going to find out the value of limit the value of limit when x tends to 2x minus 1 as this is a linear function we can use the method of substitution that we discussed in last to last part and the value of limit what this function is giving me that is also 1. So what I can conclude now that the value of the function at fx when x is equal to 2 and the limit of the function when we are approaching x towards 2 both of them are giving me the same value and from the definition of continuity I can say that when the value that I have obtained from the limits is equal to the value of the function then the function is continuous so based on the same analogy and the given definition of a continuous function I can say that the function fx that is x minus 1 is continuous at the point x equal to 2. Let's do another example and try to see where the function is going to be discontinuous. Suppose you have a function fx that is x square minus 9 upon x plus 3. So this is a rational function and the most important part whenever we are going to consider a rational function is that we have to see that the denominator what we are considering must never be 0 because something by 0 is always undefined what we will see first of all we will find the value of fx at x equal to minus 3 what we see that the value of f at x equal to minus 3 is 0 by 0 format that is undefined so there is one point for sure that the value of function at x equal to 3 x equal to minus 3 is not defined next part what we have to see we have to see what is the limit of the function when we are approaching towards minus 3 either from the left or from the right value of the function x square minus 9 upon x plus 3 when we are approaching towards the left or the right comes out to be minus 6. So yes the value of this function when we are approaching x towards minus 3 is existing but what we have seen that the limit that we have got from this calculation and the value of this function both of them are not equal so this is pointing to the fact that the value obtained in part b and part c are not equal hence the function is not going to be continuous at the point x equal to minus 3. There will be certain properties that will be 
followed by the function suppose we have two functions and those functions are continuous at a point x equal to c then what we can say that the sum of the functions fx plus gx difference of the function fx minus gx product fx into gx and the quotient fx by gx are continuous on the same interval except for the values of x that will make the denominator of the quotient function 0. Suppose fx by gx is the required quotient function and the value of x at c for the given function gx is going towards 0 then that function is not going to be continuous because the denominator of the function is becoming 0 and that is undefined for a quotient function. Now there are certain points which has to be on your tips if you are considering engineering exams into your cup of cake, cup of tea. So very first thing which you must know about that every polynomial function is continuous whenever you are considering continuity. Every rational function is continuous except the point where the denominator becomes 0 as the fraction will be undefined. Now let's summarize function can have three different kinds of discontinuity suppose the function which we are taking is x square minus 4x minus 5 upon x square minus 2x minus 15 this you can do with the graph of the function the very first type of discontinuity what we will consider is that discontinuity at a vertical asymptote we will get a vertical asymptote at a point in rational function whenever the denominator is going to be 0 so this vertical asymptote is the significance of the point when the denominator of a rational function becomes 0. Discontinuity at a whole is a second kind of discontinuity which we consider. And the third kind of discontinuity what we generally see in functions is that whenever a function have a gap, suppose the function is specifically defined for x less than 3 and x greater than 3 but it is not defined for the function x x equal to 3 then we will say that we have a discontinuity with the function having a gap. So these are the three different kind of discontinuity which can exist in a function and which will make it discontinuous. So in all what we have done till now, first of all we have learned the limits and their properties. The second point that we did was left hand limit and the right hand limit and in this session we have did uh, the basic concepts of continuity and the properties of continuity along with how a function can be discontinuous and how we will define the various types of discontinuities. So students till now we did the topics limits and continuity in detail which has also include, included the left hand limit, right hand limit, continuity and its various properties. In the next coming part we are going to deal about L orbital rules so stay tuned for the next part.